I'd been wondering when you would be coming here. We've sent dozens of letters to your magical guardian over the years, but he seemed intent to keep you a secret. The goblin started. Stephanie scowled. You have no idea. She gestured to her attire and hair. He put some kind of tracker on me. I barely made it here before one of his lackeys grabbed me. As your magical guardian, he is technically allowed to do that, unfortunately. Is there any way for me to get out from under his crooked nose? She asked hopefully. Indeed there is, which was probably why he was so adamant to keep you from accessing this bank. While the most of what we do is store money, we also provide other services. If you were to accept your inheritance, you could potentially gain greater power. Power that could be used to escape your bonds. It's that easy? She asked incredulously. Bloodrot shook his head. Not normally, but you're a special case. Did you notice the inheritance you're eligible for in your blood test? Stephanie nodded. The Peverils? The name was unfamiliar to her. Indeed. You see, long ago one of your ancestors chose to give up their claim to one of the most powerful and wealthy titles in the magical world. That woman was Iolanthe Peveril, who, after sealing the accounts, went on to marry Hardwin Potter. Why would she do that? Stephanie asked, frowning. Bloodrot sneered. She found her family's dark reputation to be despicable and no longer wanted anything to do with it. However, the blood has remained dormant in your family for centuries. We can perform a ritual that will reawaken the ancient blood. With access to the Peveril vaults and properties, you might have an easier time fleeing from your guardians. Okay, she shrugged. The goblin frowned. Okay, what? I'll do it, she said simply, not seeing the issue here. Bloodrot's eyes widened. Just like that? The Potters have all chosen to deny the family for centuries. It's become a bit of a tradition, actually. You would break it. I don't see why not. I have no obligation to any silly traditions. And if it'll help me, I see no problem, she reasoned. The goblin nodded. Very well. I will tell the ritualist to prepare for it to be done. I will warn you, this will be extremely painful. It might also have physical or emotional effects on your person. Stephanie wasn't going to back down now. She needed to be free from the people who wanted to keep her trapped, deep underground, in a room made entirely of stone, three goblins slaved away on a series of runic designs. Stephanie was waiting, propped against the wall. She'd been told to strip naked, which was to protect her from any kind of magical backlash. She didn't mind. She'd never been that modest or easily embarrassed, and it wasn't as if goblins would be sexually attracted to a human girl. So she waited though it was hard to see much of anything since she wasn't wearing her glasses. After another ten minutes, the goblin stepped away from the circle. One of them used some kind of staff, tapping it once on the floor. A flame sprouted from one side of the circle, lighting up the designs and connecting throughout the pattern. She watched, though it was hard to make out specific symbols. Eventually the flames died down and she was told to sit in the middle. She did so, candles lighting up around her once she'd sat down, a knife was slid over to her. Cut your palm, do not worry. The ritual is designed to keep you from bleeding out. She hadn't been worried, knowing that if she were to die, she'd simply wake up back in Privet Drive. So she cut her palm. Blood flowed out at an accelerated rate, honestly flowing much faster than she'd expected. The blade must have been enchanted in some way. Her blood was absorbed by the ritual circle, though it didn't seem to be getting full. Stephanie was starting to become lightheaded from the loss. Eventually, it stopped. However, it had taken a lot more blood than she'd expected it to. One of the goblins chanted something in a guttural language, and she was instantly forced down, as if some kind of gravity was pushing her to the floor. A pulse shot through the ritual circle, originating from the centre, right below where her heart was. Then, there was another pulse, and another. As it pulsed, some of her blood started to leak upwards, coagulating into a spherical shape floating above her, the pulsing was strange and she could feel it deep inside her. It wasn't painful, but rather more just an uncomfortable feeling. This went on for several minutes before ceasing. Then, something emerged from the ground. Specifically, it emerged from a strange symbol drawn into the floor. The symbol resembled the Peveril family crest she'd seen on her blood report. This black mist moved towards the mass of blood and started to integrate itself into it. The blood did not become dark in colour, but it radiated with malice now, seeming much darker in terms of magic. When it was done, she was roughly lifted upwards off the ground. Stephanie gasped, but the ritual ignored her. The blood pulsed now, the ripples going down her body. 
The flames inside the candles surged up, going up ten or twenty feet. Then a whirlpool started to form on her chest, and the tainted blood started making its way back inside her body. Stephanie screamed, feeling as though her heart was being pierced. She could feel the blood making its way back into her, could feel the malice in it, could feel how powerful it was, and she knew that she would become strong if she accepted it. So she braced herself and grit her teeth, not screaming anymore, though it was still extremely painful. Thankfully, it only went on for around two minutes. When all of her blood had been returned, she was gently set down. The flames died down and she could now move again. She fumbled around for her glasses. They were handed to her by rough hands and she put them on. Welcome back, Air Peveril, Bloodrot said. 